jetpacks with 3D printed components, it's more likely than you think. That and more from today's episode from the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rep Fest. Brought to you by LDO Motors. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description. So I'm here with Matt Denton. This is a 3D printing convention. This mad lad brought a jetpack. So what am I looking at here? There is some 3D printing on it. I okay, promise. so it counts, it counts. <laughs> it counts. Uh, so yeah, this is a, um, a working model, let's call it, or a concept dem demonstrator. I basically built this whole thing in a physics environment, a physics simulation, so it does work, in theory. Works. Works. This has never been fired up. Actually, all the engines have been fired up on their gimbals, but it's never been flown yet. Okay. And that's because... Once you start flying something like this, you're burning about three liters of aviation fuel per minute and at 135 decibels of noise. Oh, yeah, you're not running this in your backyard. No, 700 <laughs> degrees exhaust gas as well, so they're pretty, pretty toasty. So, and the way we actually get uh, stabilization, rather than spooling up the speed of the, uh, the uh, jet engine for thrust, they're too slow to respond, unlike yep. um, quadcopters, which have electric motors. So we do vectoring. So if I move this around, you'll see that they vector really fast. Oh. So that's how we get rid of thrust. We vector it away and bring it back in when we need more. So it's a fully computerized, stabilized control and you basically fly by wire. You just point which way you want to go, forwards, backwards, left, right. That is awesome. And we have just got a patent on it as well. One of the designs I did, two of the things on this are patented now, which is really nice. So yeah. Uh, in the back here, this is a 3D printed cowl, Polymakers Filament PA12CF. And that's holding, um, just covering over the bladder. There's a fuel bladder in here that can hold 15 to 20 liters of kerosene. Okay, so it, it, does it run just our kerosene or kerosene. aviation? Kerosene. You, aviation fuel, kerosene. Okay. You can even run it on diesel with oil in it. So yeah. Really? So yeah. so these are, are these commercial jet engines or these like are, a hobby um, type thing? They're like from radio controlled planes, but they're also used, I believe, in like drones for um, okay. target practice and stuff like that. Oh, know? okay. But they're a pretty high end engine, but yeah, the radio controlled planes drones yeah all sorts of things so so i'm I, we've seen the jetpack where you have the thing on your back and you're you're, you're holding oh, it like arms? iron man yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. arms i've thing. flown that okay the gravity system <laughs> yeah so this would be a would you say a better system than well, that it's or different. it's got advantages it's very different um okay. the gravity systems is, is beautiful because it's simple you know yeah, you're, like, you're, just, you have you're the holding engine the just engine strapped on the learning curve is higher because you have to learn how to fly this thing once you get it it's amazing um, but the whole point of this one is that you can take off with the press of a button and your hands free. Yeah, because it would can, just hover, right? You can just hover. You can take your hands off the controls and sit there and hover. Okay. And, and then, you know, that's it. And then you just push forward on a stick to move where you want to go. So there's the learning curve is very low. Okay. Uh, so that side of things, that's kind of, it's a very different thing. It's a very different. Okay. You know, like, it's hard to it's hard to compare the two really, especially as this one's never flown. <laughs> yeah, but, simulated you know, it as well. Simulated, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, different, different, different beasts, I think. Well, and a lot of this is looking like, well, there is some machine parts, but we got, we got aluminum extrusions yeah. here. So I had to make this, this, cause it's a, still a prototype. I didn't have a massive budget for it. Um, but what I wanted to do is make it modular. So actually all of these units, this whole unit here comes off. Oh, and it okay. will slide up and down so I can move it around. I can change the design really. So if you, you find out, you know, this has to move an inch exactly, or two, exactly, you can just shift you can just, it. Exactly that. And these two are actually identical. So these would swap out with each other, which means for spare parts, it's really good. There's not much difference. I mean, this is a mirror image of this one. So everything's interchangeable. Just makes things much easier. And also, right now, we're missing the middle engines. There should be two more engines here. So this would be uh, uh, hexa he no, hexacopter? Or uh, well, yeah, but like a hex. But or actually, or these middle engines don't move. They don't need to gimbal. Oh, they so just, they're just they straight for thrust? thrust? Yeah. Okay. So you can change them out. With uh, six engines as it is, it will give you about 180 kilos of thrust. But you don't want to be maxed out of that. You'd be no. running this at about 120, 130 kilos. Okay. But you can always switch these mid engines out and get even more thrust out of it. So oh. you know, if you want a bigger payload. So, so these are pretty much they they are thrust, but these are your control Correct. surfaces, yes. and Correct. then this would just be give you an extra just boost. lift. Yeah, okay. this would be like your out your outriggers on your big shuttle and rockets and okay. stuff. Okay, you know, okay. Solid rocket boosters. Yeah, just boosters. <laughs> okay, awesome. And and how much flight time are you looking at? Um, once this is fine. With 15 final. liters of fuel, the simulation I do is about four and a half minute, minutes of flight. That's, not, 15 that's actually pretty good pretty for good. a jetpack. Yeah, it's pretty good. So You can cover a lot of ground because you can go over rivers, 
up mountains, you know, and you can do it How all at free meters. How fast can you go, you think? Right now, I've got it tuned at about 30 miles an hour, okay. but that's because it's a, where you want to be comfortable at. You, yeah, it, it, you you're not flying the, like Superman. No, you, 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 you're like you're going to be, you know, just standing there, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, but if you want to get more aggressive with the angle of attack, and then you're throwing away thrust, so you're losing. So you, there's a Yeah, because it's also your lift, exactly. right? The faster exactly. you go, the less lift, yeah. Exactly, so 30 miles an hour is quite good, to be honest, because you're okay. covering ground fast, so. Okay, okay. That is really cool. And, and what's controlling all this? Like, how do you program yeah. and control a jetpack? So I'm still working on what I want to do with that. I've tried off the shelf, um, like Pixhawk based controllers, uh, flight controllers. I wrote my own firmware for all the Pixhawk hardware, which was okay and I learned a lot, but again, that wasn't quite right. So now I'm probably going to go back to a combination of the two. So I'll take an off the, sh off the shelf flight controller and then put a subsystem underneath that that looks at that data but it also means I can put some redundancy in. So I could have two flight controllers running side by side and a subsystem monitoring both. Okay. Because obviously we want safety. So this has six motors. So yep. what happens, have you worked out like failure conditions when if you lose a motor, like will it so, just hover or? Yeah, no, right now you can lose one of the mid engines. Okay. And you can compensate enough to bring you down gently. Okay. But if you lose one of the outer engines at the moment, you're in a bit of a problem. Okay. But that's the nice thing about building all of this in a simulated environment. I you can, can test see what all happen. of those in scenarios and okay. see what happens, yeah. Okay. And are you, are you, is this just a project? Or are you hoping to sell this? Cause I know uh, you got patents on it. Yeah, it has a, we have a company called Maverick Aviation. Um, but ultimately, yeah, we'd like to get into a point. Honestly, I would get to a point where we have a really good working model and then pass it over to someone else to put into production. Are you going to be the first one to fly it? Oh, absolutely. Awesome. Well, cheers. Great talking to you. Thank you. Cheers. So I've traveled all the way across the ocean, three train rides, two flights, just to meet Andrew here from 3D Gloop. Andrew, what do you guys sell? Uh, well, we sell glues for uh, 3D prints. You don't uh, have any here? No, no, because we're giving it away and oh. uh, it's all gone. Okay. <laughs> so it, it's glue? Yeah, it's glue. Okay, thanks. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> So I'm here with Ollie and Alex from Alloy here at Smurf in Oxford, and we've got a big old stack of, this is, what are we looking at here? What are we looking at here? So these are aluminium uh, heat sinks. So LED heat sinks for car lights. Um, and basically by making them like this in a big stack, it can get the cost down from like 30 pounds to three pounds each. So this, um, this was, 3D, so again, this is aluminum, aluminium, yep. sorry, aluminium. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this was 3D printed aluminium. This was all printed in one go. Yeah, one go, 30 hours to print this. 30 hours, really? 30 hours, yeah. Wow. So we use the quad laser machines made by Renishaw. Okay. But it's basically firing four lasers, wiping a thin layer of the powder across, yep. and then moving down uh, 30 microns at a time, building it up layer by layer. And, and how many units are on this thing? Uh, I think that's 360. 360, yeah, wow. Yeah. And they can literally be just snapped off, just a little bit of cleaning up where the support material was and, and they're ready to go. Okay, cool. And then uh, for this one here, what are we looking at here? So this is, um, this is more just to show uh, the alloy development that we do. So this is an alloy that we've created ourselves in Oxford. Okay. Um, so this is part of our business is that we'll create new metals for our customers, do all the parameter development, work it out, and then go into production making okay. the parts. So depending on the, the temperature, the use case, the hardness, you would develop the alloy yeah, yeah. and then print it. Awesome. And then for something like this, they would wire EDM it off the plate once yeah. it's done? Yeah. Okay. And then just reclaim the plate, skim it, uh, CNC. Awesome. And then we got some gold over here, but <laughs> what, what are we looking at here? Because this looks like, so, you know, a jawbone or something. So basically, this is a chrome-plated titanium medical insert. So, so is, is this like hollow like this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. So basically these are chrome plated because it's uh, for a joint in an ankle. Okay. So it has to be plated and polished to like a really good finish. So there's good movement in the joint like after uh, once it's been inserted. And is this like a prototype or is this actually in use? They, not this particular one, I think. Well, yeah. It, but we have three uh, are inside people right now in the UK. Wow. Yeah. yeah. 
That is really cool. And then you have some other examples here. This looks yeah, like so uh, These are more ankle. like if somebody's had like an accident, if there's damaged bone or a cancerous part of the bone, the surgeon would cut out that damaged part, um, send us the scans, and we can print the, in, the replacements for the bone. And then where the holes will are in between, the bone regrows in, in between those holes and, and it becomes part of you. Oh really? And what, what metal do you use for this? Like uh, titanium? So that's titanium? Titanium, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's the best one for uh, the bone to grow okay. to. So so if I wanted to be Wolverine, can you do this for me? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one one small small piece at a time. Little piece at a time. Probably hurt a bit. Probably hurt a bit. <laughs> oh wow, that's really cool. It, and where are you guys based out of? You're in Oxford, um, eh? Yeah, yeah. So we're just on either side of Oxford. We're in Yarnton, and our, uh, Yarnton's our research facility, and Abingdon's our production facility. Awesome. So yeah, we came here today just sort of looking for recruits because we all came from like the hobbyist background and FDM printing, and we're like, it's a great place to find recruits. You know, passionate people about 3D printing. So awesome. That's why awesome. we came along. <laughs> cool. Awesome. So appreciate it very much. Thank no, you. That's really cool. Cheers, Thank you, man. Cheers. Thanks. That's alloyed. <laughs> Videos from this year's Sanjay Mortimer RepRap Festival are brought to you by LDO Motors. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description.